see all your pretty faces out there tonight. That wasn't me. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Are you all excited? just not convinced you know if you'd have been here Wednesday night you would be convinced just like us how many was here for prayer night Wednesday night man we've seen God move in this house and it was powerful we've seen healing we've seen deliverance seen hope in places where there was no hope. Our God is faithful and he's true. And I know over the past few weeks, the messages I've been preaching have been some hard truths. Hard truth, but needed. Hard truth, but the truth nevertheless. So, Today I have a message, and I've titled it, Don't Be Deceived. I love it. Old Johnny comes in there smiling from ear to ear. Yeah. Gives me courage. Somebody loves me. Amen, amen. So, a lot of times when I share the end time message, and I share the messages and the scriptures and the truths in the message, the response I get almost unitedly is the same. People say, well, I just don't believe that a good, loving God could allow us to go through that kind of tribulation. Well, today I want to talk about that. Because that lines up nowhere in Scripture. The Bible never said that we would not go through anything. As a matter of fact, Jesus said quite the opposite. Job, the Bible says, was the most upright man before God. The devil took his children, and Job worshiped God. I don't know about you, but I could not think of any worse tribulation in my life than that. Then the devil attacked his wealth. Could you imagine being the wealthiest man in the land and being broke? And Joseph or, and Job worshipped the Lord. So now in our church culture, we believe that oh, we're Christians. We don't have to go through anything. We're blessed and highly favored. I'm a child of the king. Don't touch me. You say, well, Pastor, that was the Old Testament. Okay, let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to the New Testament. Let's just check out what the New Testament has to say. Am I echoing? I can, I can hear myself. That's not a good thing. I don't like to listen to myself. Go to the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. If you have your Bibles, you can follow along. If not, it will be on the screen. I think I got the scriptures right today. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer, for my name's sake. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Paul just got saved. This is New Testament. Paul was killing the Christians. Jesus revealed himself to him. He gave his heart to Jesus. And Jesus did not say, don't worry, you don't have to go through anything else. I got you. I'm going to make your life all good. Don't you worry about nothing. Jesus 
said, Paul, I'm going to show you what great things you will suffer for my name's sake. Man, Christians today, the first sight of trouble, we crumble. We fall apart. I just, I just can't take it. I don't know what I'm going to do. God hates me. I don't know what's happening. Listen. God told Paul, he says, I'm going to show you what great things you will suffer for my name's sake. You say, well, I, I suffer. The devil attacks me all the time. Oh, really? Well, let's look at Paul's sufferings. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's just, let's just explore Paul's I'm going to start at verse 23 just so are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in death often of the Jews, five times received by forty stripes, save one. Uh, I don't know about you, but when was the last time you got forty stripes, save one? In your walk. Just saying. This does not sound like Christianity today. Listen to what he says. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck and a night and a day been in the deep. In journeyings often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must need glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. That tells me a story. Paul said I was whipped beaten with rods, starved, thirsty, naked. I don't know, but y'all look like you got lots of clothes. Because every Sunday I see you, you got a pretty new outfit on. Or if not, you sure did wash it well. Listen, just because you are a Christian doesn't mean that you won't see tribulation. I shared with you the truths of the gospel and the kingdom and the word of God and what it says about tribulation. But still there are those that would like to believe. And listen, it's not about what you think, it's about what it says. About what Jesus said. Well, that wasn't Jesus, that was Paul. Okay, let's look at what Jesus said. Go with me to John chapter 16, verse 33. John chapter 16, verse 33. Actually, I'm going to do one better. I know they don't have it up there, but I'm going to go back one verse. Um, if you'll bear with me. So I gave them 33, but I'm going to read 32 just so you know what Jesus is talking about. This is in red. If you have your Bible, this is Jesus talking. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. 
Now, most Christians think, you know, because they're tempted of the devil and they're going through different situations and, you know, they broke their fingernail, stubbed their toe, the devil is attacking them and they just can't understand how God could allow this to happen. God help us. What are you going to do when real tribulation comes? How will you stand? How will you fare? Ladies and gentlemen, we're being weighed. We're being weighed. How will he find you? Will he find you wanting? How will the scales tip? You say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. God knows my heart. <laughs> Again, I take you to Scripture. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. Pastor, all the time talking about holiness, and I got to change, and I got to clean up, and I got God knows my heart. Paul again, chapter 9, verse 27, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. That's the scariest verse in the Bible I've ever read. Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. And Paul says, although I preach the gospel, i got to keep myself under subjection unless I become a castaway. But, you know, God knows your heart. You think God didn't know Paul's heart? we got to wake up, saints. we got to wake up. I know, nobody wants to hear about the sins in their life and nobody wants to hear they got to clean up and they have to resist and they have to stop. I see lots of carnal Christians, but I don't see Christians led by the Spirit of God. When are we going to be led by the Spirit of God and not by our flesh? When this don't feel good, I give up. I'm done. I don't need this in my life. You might not need it right now, but when you take your last breath, you will need it. You will need it. You will not regret it. Our God is faithful in keeping his promises. But listen, the Bible said, everybody said, well, 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 listen, Jesus said, it is finished. Let me tell you what he finished. He finished the bridge from here to eternity so that you could get to heaven. But he never removed your free will. You have free will. You have to choose him. you got to choose him above all this nonsense. The world might look appealing. Might feel good. Listen, we, we all have triggers, right? And triggers drive us back to our old behaviors. But listen, you can do something. You can change your source. I still have triggers, but now, my peace comes from a different source. My comfort comes from a different source. Don't run from him, run to him. We have allowed the enemy of our soul to give us a scaredy cat mentality. And I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't, I don't do well with that because I have no fear. That's why my body's all broke up. I have no fear. <laughs> my, body, my body's broke up because I, that fear button, it wasn't included in my makeup. <laughs> my parents just shook their head. too dumb to be scared. <laughs> we have gotten to a place in Christianity where the deception of the world has crept into the church. I don't want
to be deceived. We will go through tribulous times. You will see tribulation. You will experience things that you can't believe that your God will allow you to experience. But God told Paul, he said, I'm going to show you what great things you're going to suffer for my name's sake. And I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like tiptoeing through the tulips. That doesn't sound like nothing will ever happen to you after you get saved. Our God, matter of fact, he said only the overcomer is going to make it. You have to overcome something. And in my Bible, it doesn't mean you have to overcome the devil busting your toes up. You're going to have to overcome this flesh. This fleshly desire to be comfortable where you're at. Now is not the time to be comfortable. When you get to heaven, and just imagine if you was in line for the judgment seat, and Paul was in front of you, awaiting to go before the judgment. And Paul turns to you and he says, well, what, what's going on? What did you do for Christ? And you say, well, I was a Christian. I went to church on Sunday. What did you do for Christ? Well, well, I went to church. No, no, no. I, I, I could see Paul now. He'd be like, what? Like, what did you do for him? Tell me your stories. Oh, but, 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 but I ain't got none. I, I went to church. So what? Listen, the devil beats you here every Sunday. never late. He's never late. Folks, we got to get it together. And I know, Pastor, be nice. I am being nice. I am being nice. Because I love you. Because I care where you go when you take your last breath. It's not about how you feel anymore. It's not about how I feel. You think you're the only one going through something? Please don't visit my house. And, and, and I don't take that lightly. You think the devil ain't beating down my door every single day of my life? to destroy everything that God is trying to do and God has created. You're not alone. Amen. We'll just let them preach. Amen. So let's look at 2 Timothy. I want to talk about what the church is looking like right now. How many think the church is in good shape? Uh, come on. Yeah, you know, everybody's all right. You know, they're saved. They're going to heaven, right? You know, they're saved and sanctified. Probably right. They know they need a Savior. We're going to Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. This also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Obviously, he's talking about the last days. Verse 3. Oh, wait, verse 2. Verse 2. You were right. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. I, I cannot remember a time in my life where that statement wasn't any more true than it is today. Listen, people don't care about anybody but themselves. They're about their own gain. They're about their own stuff. And they don't care about nobody else. Don't care who it hurts.
hurts, don't care who they offend, don't care. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous. Oh, my. They're so covetous, they think that those that have should give to them just because they don't have. Listen, you go to work, work yourself to death, create wealth, and then I want you to give it to me because I don't want to work. You just can't make your stuff up. Boasters. My goodness. I have to control myself at work because, you know, some people think that, you know, they're better than everybody else. Everybody else falls short and they're the only ones that boasters. You ever seen anybody like that in church? They're just better than everybody else and everybody else just needs to be like them. And they can't understand why everybody else can't get it together. When they set themselves up as a judge, as if the whole world's going to hell but them. I know that's not you. That's not anybody in here. But y'all got it together, right? Proud. Pride. Oh, my. Wait a minute. Pride. I'm going to show you something here. This is something that I've heard it preached many times all over the place. And go to 2 Corinthians 12. 2 Corinthians 12. I, I want to clear something up. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measures through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in heard pastors say, oh, Paul was a drunk, or Paul was this, or Paul was that. But if you read the scripture, it actually tells you what his thorn in the flesh is. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. He said, I've, God has given me so many revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan, here he is, to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. There was a messenger from Satan sent to buffet his mind to make him proud because he knew more than everybody else. But why would you be prideful of something that was given to you? Everything you have from God was given to you freely, but yet you walk around so proud as if the world should bow down to you because you are anointed. All the revelations that we have have been given to us by God. Amen. We have no right to be prideful. Amen. You know, the only pride that I have in my heart is that my Savior has never let me down. I've never been afraid to tell people that my God is faithful because I am proud to say that my God has never failed. The time that we're living in, if you would go back to my scripture in Corinthians, I just wanted to share that with you all. That was free. Sorry, I just had to throw that in. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Unless I should be exalted above measure. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. Oh. <laughs> you know, never before has there been an internet, YouTube, all this stuff, right? Some might not know what to blaspheme means. Think about calling what is good evil and saying that the work of the Holy Spirit is the work of the devil when you know it's the Holy Spirit. All right. 
Let's move along. Disobedient to parents. My goodness, people. <laughs> I don't know if you've been out to the grocery store lately. <laughs> I want to tell you something. They need to bring back the belt. I don't care what anybody says. I don't believe in abusing children. But there is nothing wrong with pulling a switch off a limb. How will your kids ever know right from wrong if you don't teach them? And I promise you, time out doesn't work. Well, wait a minute. Time out didn't work for me. That didn't work for me. And, you know, I'm a strong-willed, hard-headed. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but my kids are strong-willed, hard-headed. So sometimes you got to be a little bit, you just got to whip that You gotta beat that rebellion out of them. I'm sorry. Let me let me get back on track. Down the rabbit hole. Parents, your kids have been so disobedient to your teachings. It hurts. It hurts. And today. I'm only 51 years old. I, I ain't been around very long. I'm still young. Um, but I've never seen kids so disobedient to their parents as I do today. Let me tell you something. If I'd have said some of the stuff to my parents that these kids say today, I wouldn't be talking here today. <laughs> I'd have me some false teeth up in here like this. I'd have about four pins and screws in my jaw. I'm just saying. <laughs> huh? Unthankful. We live in a society that's so ungrateful. Man. People are entitled. You think people owe you something. People are bold enough to think that God owes them something. And nobody owes you anything. You have a God-given right especially in this country for now, to stand up and make something of yourself. To go farther than your children, your grandfather, your fathers, any of them have ever gone. But you know, there's something to remember. Hard times bring about strong men. Easy times bring about weak men. There's a father. He was walking. His son was riding a horse. His son was driving a car. His son was driving a Mercedes. And guess what? His son was back to walking. Hard times create strong men. Say, God, why did I have to go through all this? Why me? Why me? Why me? God's trying to create something strong inside of you. He's trying to build up strong warriors for him that will be able to stand in the times that we're living in. Because it ain't getting no easier, it's going to get harder. And trust me, I don't know about you, but I read my Bible and my Bible says you will be hated for his name's sake. It's coming. You think it's bad now, wait till it gets real. When they start calling Christians a bunch of terrorists. Oh, it's coming. Right now when I'm preaching, <laughs> it's called hate speech. Because I don't believe in their woke agenda. Sorry. Not sorry. Too many times we get so consumed with public opinion with the talk of the media, with the narrative of, I had somebody asked me the other day, he says, do you lean to the left or does your church lean to the right? I said, sir, we don't lean, we just stand. I stand. I'm just standing. 
I'm standing on the truth and the glory of God. Man, the world's going to go this way. The world's going to go that way. I'm going to stand on the word of God, the rock. The rock of my salvation that cannot be moved. Listen, y'all can lean any way you want. And it's not about left, right, donkeys, elephants. I don't care what you believe. Listen, it, it doesn't matter to me. There used to be a time where people could disagree about their politics and still be friends. It's not that way anymore. Now it's a hate thing. Oh, you're a Republican. Listen, folks, it's not about left or right. It's not about elephants and donkeys. It's about what's true and what's not. We have to stand on biblical principles and the truth in the word of God. You say, well, how are you voting? I'm voting the Bible. You vote any way you want, but I'm voting the Bible. Say, well, I guess you're one of them. I guess you're one of them Republicans. Well, I ain't a Republican. I'm a blood bought Christian that knows what the Word of God says, and so therefore I will stand firm on it. And if your agenda doesn't look like His Word, you ain't got my vote. You ain't got my vote. I know. Don't get political. Right, I got you. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay in my lane. We're living in a time. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 3. Without natural affections. I'm only going to spend two minutes there and I'll, I'll move on. God help me. Show love. Natural affections is between one man and one woman. I will not back down. I will not be coerced. I will not be shamed. I can only say what the Bible says. If I offend you, I can't help you. The truth hurts, but let it sink in a minute. It'll kind of make sense. All right, that's my three minutes. I'm moving on. Truce breakers. Man, people will tell you they love you to your face and stab you right in the back as you're walking away. Truce breaker. False accusers. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Because I refuse to cross certain lines, because I refuse to do things that are a little shady, because I refuse to go down a certain path, I'm looked down upon as weak. You should have just busted his head. <laughs> well, my flesh might have liked that. And maybe back in the day, I, I would have. But I found a new way. The battle starts here now. The battle's not here anymore. The battle's here. Those who are for me are greater than those that are against me. But don't get it, don't get it twisted. I wasn't always saved. I, I, I was an airborne ranger, so the only thing I learned is how to kill people. I was real good at it too. But that's going with it. Anyway, rabbit trail. I'm trying to stay on track. 
despisers of those that are good. All the things that are good are spoken evil of. I'm pro-life because I believe what the Bible says. And I'm made out to be an evil person. Jeremiah 1.5 says, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I called you as a prophet to the nations. But yet they think it's okay to kill this creation. They call it a clump of cells. A clump of cells? My Bible says that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Huh? And God formed you before, anyways. He knew you before you were born. If he knows you before you were born, then obviously he knows that baby before that baby was ever born. Murder is wrong. No matter how you reason it in your own minds, I don't care. I don't believe in that. I will not back down. Traitors. <laughs> Traitors. How many times do I see Christians <laughs> praising God on Sunday? but hating on God Monday through Friday. Well, Pastor, we all make mistakes. Yes, we all make mistakes. But you can't live through, live like the devil Monday through Saturday and expect to come in here on Sunday. Oh, bless the Lord. If you're a friend of the devil, you can't be a friend of God. Heady and high-minded. You can't tell nobody enough in these days. Listen, when I was growing up, I just, I got to be real. I looked for them old guys to teach me. Dude, I find them old men been doing construction their whole life. You know, they broke up, their hands are all crippled up, and they, you know, they're working. I'd latch on to them, and I'd suck every bit of information out of them I could get. Show me, how'd you do that? How do you do that? How do you do that? What'd you do? How'd you get that to look like that? Not today. Not today. Now you got folks that won't show you or teach you anything because they're afraid you're going to take their job. Pastors that don't want anybody to know more than them because they're afraid you'll think less of them. Man, my greatest prayer for you is that you far exceed anything I could ever teach. I want you to know way more than I do. I'm giving you a platform so you can grow from it. Don't stay where I'm at. Make me look stupid. You'll make my day. Then I know I have fulfilled God's promise for my life. My job is to push you to farther than I've gone. Not keep you under my thumb. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Well, I don't know if I have to even talk about that. I watch, well, I love podcasts because I don't have to watch them commercials that I can't stand. Hey, I was watching a podcast and these young folks were talking about casual sex. I know, I said it in church. Anyways, and the one was arguing why they should be able to do it when they want, where they want, whenever they want, however, how often they want. And the other one was trying to tell them how this is a sanctity that when you come together, a man and a woman, it forms a bond. It's a bonding thing. And for reproduction. Right? They didn't want to hear it. People don't want to hear it. They're more in love with the pleasures of it than they are with God and his ways. It's, it's hard to get Christians to discipline themselves because they think they're so highly favored and so high-minded they don't want to hear anything else. Jesus called us to live a disciplined life. 
not just free as a bird. This ain't free bird religion. Jesus called us to be disciplined, to live disciplined lives. Disciplined so that we're not obedient to the flesh, but we're led by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will not lead you to what feels good for your flesh. The Spirit of God will lead you to things that are tough. Things you don't want to do, but you know you have to do. You think I want to come in here every night of the week and preach and teach and... And sometimes I'm going through stuff too. But I still have to get up here on Sunday and tell you that God is good. He 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 has a plan for your life. You think I want to all the time? I won't lie to you. No. No. Sometimes I think, God, you love everybody else more than you love me. <laughs> Why are you calling me? Like you don't even like me sometimes. And that's just reality. To whom, is mu who, to whom much is given, much is required. It's not about how I feel. It's not about how you feel. Nobody cares how you feel. It's not about how you feel. It's about how can I advance the kingdom of God. We want to build our kingdom. God says, I want you to build my kingdom. I don't care what I have in this world. That fast is gone. The good Lord giveth and the good Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm like Paul. I've learned to live with abundance and I've learned to live with lack. I've learned to live when I had to eat peanut butter sandwiches all week at work when I was working 12 to 14 hours a day, killing myself, starving to death. And I've learned to live in abundance with God's blessings. But no matter what situation I'm lived in, I've learned to praise the Lord. The glory of God is not contingent on my situation. My situation has nothing to do with how good God is. The whole time Job was going through his experience, God was planning his future. Devil getting under my feet. All right. <clears throat> Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. All right, I can't. I can't hold back. Listen, when you go to church, I went and visited a church without talking about the name of it, whatever, before I came to destination. And um, my wife, she said, you got to come try that church. You got to come try this church. I said, okay. We went, and I sat through the sermon, and we were leaving. She said, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? I said, there's no Holy Spirit here. She said, what are you talking about? It was great. I said, watch this. I went up to the pastor. I said, pastor, I said, do you believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit? He looked me dead in the eye and says, well, there's some things that passed away with the apostles. I scratched my head. I'm like, wait a minute. He changes not, but yet he changed already. What are you talking about? The same God that performed the miracles in the apostles, the same God that's with us today, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same Holy Spirit that raised me from the dead, the same Holy Spirit that created a man that couldn't walk to walk is the same Holy Spirit that causes me to walk here today. So listen, a form of godliness, they've got a religion, but they deny the power of God, the healing power of God, the deliverance power of God, praying in tongues, baptism of the Holy Spirit. They want to put all that stuff off. I got news for you folks, that's where the power of God is. 
Paul said, I didn't come to you in word alone, but I came in demonstration, huh? a manifestation of the power of God. Man, we need some churches where the wind is blowing, the Holy Spirit's blowing. Every week I say, Lord, just let your Holy Spirit blow in this place. We need some place where the wind is blowing. Come on, we need some wind in this church. You can't sit there and tell me that you love God, but God don't do nothing anymore because that passed away with the apostles. What a lie. The devil is a lie. You know how I know? I've witnessed it. I, I'm a walking testimony. Wait a minute. He doesn't do that anymore, but... How did I get set free? How did I get baptized in the Holy Ghost? They said, oh, well, you know, you know, that's, that's the devil. I said, well, there's two things that just happened here. Either the devil got saved or you're wrong. Because when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I couldn't stop telling people about Jesus. So I'm like, either the devil just got saved or you're wrong. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of God thereof. From such, turn away. For of this sort are they which creep in houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is important, people. Please get this. You can learn the Bible never receive the truth. Truth is given. Truth is only recognized through the Spirit of God. When you come to church, you want to know why you see things, and then when you leave, you can't see them? Because when you come here, you come into the presence of God, the Holy Spirit reveals things to you. So that's why it's important to take notes, and when you walk out the door, the devil can't rob you. Oh, my. That's why, beside my bed, I have a notebook. In my Bible, I have about 500 notebooks. The church orders me a pack of these a week. You know why? Because as soon as God gives it to me, when the Holy Spirit reveals it to me, I write it down. Because the enemy's coming to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to steal the revelation that God is bringing to you so that you don't have it. Well, listen, I refuse to let him have back anything that God has given me. I will not relinquish authority over what God has given me authority over. Too many Christians today, God gives them the victory and they give it back. No. I'm going to keep what God gave me. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep it and to fight for it. Because when I fight my battles, I fight them on my knees. Therefore, the one who provides it, provided it with his blood. I don't take that lightly. Why do you take that so lightly? Why would you want to crucify again the one... out of here our God is faithful but his truth is that we will suffer for his name's sake before we leave this earth because trust me he's coming back just as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west I will see my Lord coming in the clouds whether I'm riding with him <laughs> or whether I'm going up to meet him. Because the Bible says all those who are asleep in Christ shall come back with him to get us who are alive and remain. So either I'm coming back with him because that means I've left before he came or I'm going to rise up to meet him in the clouds. One way or another, he's coming back. But folks, even if you're saved, remember what Paul said. I have to keep my body under subjection lest after I have preached the gospel to others I might myself become a castaway. Don't give up what God has given you because of what the world wants you to believe. The enemy's slick. But we want to combat that with the truth. Alright, 
stand to your feet. Let me get you out of here. Please tell me somebody received something here today. Your God is a loving God. He has a plan for your life. He wants to use you. The Bible says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are just a few. Join with us. Join with the saints. Let's go to war. Let's expand the kingdom of God. Our God is faithful, but we have not been. We've been asleep. The spirit of slumber has crept into the church, and we've fallen asleep. Let us awaken. Let us be aware of the times we're living in and the enemy who's against us. I want the prayer team to come. Maybe you're here today and you've kind of fallen into a, a slumber. You're not lost, but you're not where you should be. You're saved, but you're not where you want to be. He got you this far. I promise you he'll take you the rest of the way. Maybe you need prayer. Maybe you want to go deeper but don't know how. Maybe you're struggling with something today and you need somebody to help you, to pray with you. We want to pray with you. We want to fight with you. There's no judgment in this house. Only a witness. A witness of the truth of the gospel of the kingdom. A witness that there is a Savior that's stronger than we could ever think. Willing to do everything that we can. Willing to make a way for us where there is no way. He said, all you who are heavy and laden with burden, come to me. Come to me. Dear Heavenly Father, Sister Jeannie, Sister Jeannie, Sister Jeannie, Sister Jeannie, Sister Jeannie. God is giving us revelation and he's given us time to get ourselves in a good place so that we can fight the good fight and not be dismayed and not give up don't get weary and well doing saints trust me when you're weak he's strong He's just waiting for you to call out. Well, I hope today encourages you to make a stand. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I did what you commanded me to do. I spoke the truth of your word. I shared your goodness. I shared your love. Now, Father, I pray that your word would do what it was created to do. Perform the works that you promised you would. Father, I pray that you help us. Give us wisdom, knowledge, truth, and understanding of your word and your will for our lives. Give us understanding of the time that we're living in and the importance serving you with all that we are. And God, I'll forever give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Lord, today I pray for our children. 
I come against that devil that has wrapped his ugly talons into our children. I pray, Lord, that you send warring angels to fight for them. I plead your blood over them. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And somebody who would witness with me said, Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Have a great week. Bless you, Lord.